Ladies and gentlemen, we have made it to week five, which means that teams are going to start to have their bye week. There are four teams on a bye this week, five if you include the Commanders because they're playing the Bears. Grassy Posse Packer Nation. Welcome to an episode of Packcast, the podcast where you don't. I do Packers name, but it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom. Less games for me to get wrong. Grassy, and today we are going to be breaking down and predicting every single game in week five of the NFL. And last week, I didn't do too bad. I went 11 and 5 in the Pick'em League. Now, technically, I forgot to pick the Packers and I just didn't pick anybody in my excitement of that game. So it's grayed out, but I'm counting it as a loss. 11 and 5 last week, 39 and 25 on the season. Will I have better luck this week? Probably not. But enough about me. Who's having great luck? Aaron's picks won is 51 and 13 on the season in our Pick'em League. You still could join if you would like. The link is in the description. And hey, you'll probably do better than me. Starting off with Thursday Night Football. Oh, great. Another primetime game. You got the Chicago Bears taking on the Washington Commanders. The Bears took a resounding lead against the Denver Broncos. Justin Fields was a monster. He was setting franchise records. He was having a perfect passer rating. And then the second half happened, and that team completely fell to crap. And listen... I'm not going to pile on the Bears because there's no need to. The Bears are in trouble. I don't think they have the coaches. I don't think they have the personnel. And it's just trouble in paradise. Right now, they have the number one and number two overall pick because they have the Panthers draft pick. And even if they drafted two quarterbacks, I don't think their fan base has enough faith in them. But they're actually going to be able to develop any of those guys. So yeah, Chicago... It's a mess right now. Meanwhile, you have the Washington Commanders who took the Eagles into overtime in a scrappy battle. And listen, Commanders, I've been ragging on your offensive line basically since the start of the season, and I still will. But how does it feel to know that you do not have the worst O-line even within your own division? Because good God, the Giants exist. But honestly, this could wind up being a sneaky, decent game. The Commanders, I think, definitely have the edge with their defense, and I just think their offense is a bit better. But Justin Fields has proven that he can play. But can the Bears put together four quarters of actual football? I don't know. I have to imagine that this is Eberflus after Claypool said that coaches weren't utilizing him correctly. The next time that you want to come in here and tell me what I'm doing wrong, you are welcome to keep it to yourself because I don't care. But with or without Chase Claypool, I'm going to pick the Commanders here just because I think they have been a scrappy football team. They took the Eagles into the deep waters and almost came out victorious. And the Bears, yeah, it's just bad. Then you got another London game. And I mistakenly said that the Jaguars were playing at home last week. But hey, it's fine. They're playing in London like they usually do. Taking on the Buffalo Bills and the Jaguars. Back-to-back weeks in London. Oh, bloody hell. That's what I imagine they sound like now. The Jaguars coming off a win against the Falcons last week, and while they did look better, they still look off. They're not totally in sync, though Trevor Lawrence did have a pretty good game. Meanwhile, the Bills, oh, that win streak is looking good. After that week one loss against the Jets, Josh Allen was like, bet. Their offense has just been so much better, night and day, And they kicked the crap out of the Dolphins. Their defense was starting to get after Tua, especially after Armstead went down. They were actually running the ball. Josh Allen was basically perfect on the day, and Stephon Diggs was tearing it up. Right now, I love the way the Bills are playing football. Von Miller's return gets closer and closer, and that's going to make that defensive line even better. So while the Jaguars are looking... So while the Jaguars are coming off a win, I am going to pick the Bills here, just because momentum is on their side, and... Who knows? Week five, a little bit closer to Buffalo all the way this time. Following that, you got the Tennessee Titans taking on the Indianapolis Colts. The Titans 
uh, getting the same exact score that they had back in week three. I'm rubber, you're glue. Whatever you call me sticks back on you. But they won this time. Meanwhile, the Colts losing a nail biter against the Rams. Anthony Richardson proving that, yeah, he's pretty damn good. Jonathan Taylor returning to practice this week. And all of a sudden, who knows? The Colts and the AFC South, in which everybody has the same exact record, they could be a bit of a dark horse team to maybe win that division. However, the Titans absolutely smacked the crap out of the Bengals last week. They finally exercised the demon that is Joe Burrow, and I know that the Bengals' offense has been struggling, but you gotta give credit to the Titans' defense and also their offense, which actually put points on the board. So I think this is gonna wind up being a close game. I'm going to give the slight edge to the Titans here because I think their defense is gonna be able to contain Anthony Richardson. Might be a little bit of a learning curve for him going up against a really good good defense, but I think the Colts are going in the right direction. I just don't see them getting the win this week. Following that, you got, oh God, this isn't going to be a good offensive game. You got the New Orleans Saints taking on the New England Patriots. Both these teams got slapped around last week. The Saints losing to the Buccaneers, the Patriots losing to the Cowboys, and both of them just looked pitiful. Derek Carr surprisingly played last week, hyping himself up before the game. Hey, I'm a car too, you know. And the Saints offense just really didn't look good. Alvin Kamara was back in the lineup, but was unable to get really anything going. Their defense still looks good, but Tampa just had their number and the offense just kept putting the defense back on the field. And that defense is eventually going to get tired. Also, Pete Carmichael is running your offense. Not the best results. Meanwhile, the Patriots, oof. Mac Jones got benched. Bailey Zappi came in and it didn't look much better. They are struggling on the offensive side of the ball. Their defense, again, it's going to be good. A lot of fans are looking at Bill Belichick as a GM and going, maybe that's not the answer. But either way, they need something to go right. I do think that the Patriots are going to be a lot more competitive in this game. However, I am going to pick the Saints. I think Derek Carr, another week removed from an injury, and Alvin Kamara back for a second week, shaking off some of that rust maybe. They will be able to put up more points than they did against the Buccaneers. So I have the Saints winning this game, but I imagine this is going to be a defensive battle. Then you have an AFC North showdown between the Baltimore Ravens and the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Ravens coming away with a big win against the Cleveland Browns last week, basically shutting them out. DTR made his debut, and it was not pretty. But the Ravens' defense looked incredible. Lamar Jackson, two passing touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns, and he just looked really damn good. Meanwhile, Steelers fans... Well, I'm off to destroy Canada. I'm just so sorry. Another game, another week dealing with Matt Canada. The Steelers got their heinies handed to them by the Houston Texans of all teams, which, by the way, let's put some respect on C.J. Stroud's name because he is looking real good. But the Steelers just had no answers whatsoever on offense against the Texans' defense. And let me be very clear, the offense hasn't looked good all year, but it was particularly bad against the Texans. Here, I'm going to have to give it to the Ravens. I think they're just a better team right now, though they're dealing with a ton of injuries. I just don't trust the Steelers enough. They have a great defense, but until their offense shows that they can put points on the board, I got to go with the Ravens. Following that, you got the Houston Texans taking on the Atlanta Falcons. The Texans just spoke about him. C.J. Stroud having a phenomenal start to his career, playing really, really well, has over 1,200 yards, and that offense is starting to click a little bit, and they haven't really utilized Damian Pierce that much. So there is potential that they get even better. Their defense has some great players on there, and it looks like it was a great decision to go up and draft Will Anderson, but the Texans, they're looking damn fine. Meanwhile, the Falcons, a rough outing against the Jaguars, and this is the second week in a row. Desmond Ritter after this game. Farewell, my friends. I go on to a better place. Gotcha. Yeah, it, it's not pretty. And listen, I think Desmond Ritter, there's still potential there, but I would not be surprised if you see Taylor Heineke sooner rather than later just to try and get something going. They have the run game, but if defenses close in on the run and make Desmond Ritter beat them, well, that's not going to work unless you're the Packers. But either way, I'm going to pick the Texans here. I think they're on a little bit of a hot streak right now. CJ Stroud is looking to be the real deal. And I think they continue to roll this week. 
Following that, you got a battle of the Kitty Cats. You got the Carolina Panthers taking on the Detroit Lions. And this is the Panthers trying to roar versus the Lions trying to roar. <laughs> that was it? <laughs> The Panthers offensive line is just abysmal. They cannot stop anything right now. And it looks like the O-line has regressed from last year. Looking at you, Icky. The play calling is bad. Their defense is good. I like the Panthers defense a lot. There's a lot of young studs on that team. But their offense, I mean, listen, Bryce Young doesn't really have any weapons to throw to. They don't have a true wide receiver one. And on top of that, they have no protection. It's a recipe for disaster. Meanwhile, the Lions beat the crap out of the Packers on Thursday night football at Lambeau Field, taking sole possession of the NFC North. And yes, don't be confused by my demeanor or tone. This all hurts. But the Lions, they deserve every single bit of their praise because their pass rush was phenomenal against the Packers. I imagine that it is going to tear the Panthers up. Oh, yeah. And they got Jamison Williams back as well. So the Lions, I think, will be able to take this game. And yeah, one kitty is going to be sad. And it's not going to be the Lions. Following that, you got the New York, you know what, screw that. The New Jersey Giants, you deserve that. Taking on the Miami Dolphins. Daniel Jones. I almost died. 11 sacks. 11 for the Seattle Seahawks on Monday Night Football. The Giants have yet to score a touchdown at home, and it is just ugly across the board. They need Saquon Barkley back and quick, though I don't know how much he's going to be able to do, considering there is literally nobody blocking. Meanwhile, the Dolphins suffering defeat against the Buffalo Bills. After dropping 70 on the Broncos, they only scored 20 against the Bills. They looked really good for their first two drives, and then things fell apart after Armstead got hurt, and they were not really able to defend anything that the Bills were throwing at them. Here, Dolphins team, they're playing in Florida. They're playing angry. I think they're going to smoke the Giants here. And yeah, sorry, Daniel Jones. I'm scared. Then you got the Cincinnati Bengals taking on the Arizona Cardinals. The Bengals are one in three. Would you say it's time for everyone to panic? Yes, I would, Kent. And it is not good. T. Higgins dealing with an injury. Joe Burrow doesn't have much protection behind his O-line. And the offense just can't piece anything together right now. And I still like their defense, but when the offense is just going three and out all the time, they're just constantly on the field and they're going to get exhausted. So they need to figure things out quickly. Meanwhile, the Arizona Cardinals put up a good fight against the San Francisco 49ers. Yeah, Christian McCaffrey absolutely wrecked them, but the Cardinals, they are far from the worst team in football, and they are in almost every single game. And I like that they're that chippy because a lot of people, including myself, wrote them off. And to be completely honest, I'm leaning towards the Cardinals here because every time I'm picking the Bengals, they are just not showing up and it's starting to get embarrassing here. Joe Burrow's obviously still dealing with an injury and behind that O-line, things are not going to get any better. However, for right this second, for maybe the last time, I'm gonna pick the Cincinnati Bengals to get the win, but I'm gonna tell you right now, I do not have a lot of faith in that prediction. The Cardinals, they may be able to get away with the W. They've been playing pretty tough. And for Kitty Goes Meow, you better hope you meowed this freaking fracking week. Bengals win, just in case that wasn't clear, because I'm still not clear about it. Following that, you got the Philadelphia Eagles taking on the LA Rams. The Eagles, as I mentioned before, going into overtime with the Commanders. And listen, they're 4-0. They're undefeated. That's the most important thing. Do they look perfect? Absolutely not. Are there growing pains that are happening with their new coordinators? Absolutely. And it just seems like they need time to gel. They're having a little bit more of a difficult schedule this year. And so throw all that together you're having the Eagles, who again, are still a really damn good football team. A.J. Brown, still an absolute monster. That defensive line, absolutely loaded. They're taking on the Rams this week, and the Rams, well, there's only one thing to say. Puka. Wow. He is the one. Getting the game-winning touchdown last week, and Puka is just lighting the league on fire right now. Matthew Stafford is looking pretty darn solid, and the Rams, 
They are a sneaky good team this year. And Cooper Cup isn't even back yet. I'm really excited for a wide receiver room of Tutu Atwell, Puka, and Cooper Cup. It is going to be electric. This should actually be a really fun game. And I think that this is going to be a closer game than some people might realize. I am going to go with the Eagles here because I think their defense is going to be able to slow Matthew Stafford down a bit. But the Rams, I do like what you're doing. Let's see what you look like when you're fully healthy. Then... You got the game that everybody's been waiting for. No, we're not talking about Sunday Night Football. We'll get there. You got the New York Jets taking on the Denver Broncos. You got Nathaniel Hackett. You got Sean Payton. There was a lot of bad blood in the offseason. And now, both these terrible offenses try to fight each other. The Jets actually keeping pace with the Chiefs on Sunday night football. Zach Wilson for at least a quarter looked pretty darn good. Of course, their defense is always going to be good, really limiting what Travis Kelsey could do in that game. Patrick Mahomes definitely did not have a good game. And the Chiefs, it was a little bit worrisome on offense. Meanwhile, the Broncos, they got their first win of the season. It's against the Bears, but it was a big comeback, so that's something to be excited about. And at some point, you got to imagine that Vance Joseph is going to get fired because everybody is calling for his head, except for Sean Payton. What? I love garbage. But this is probably going to be a very low-scoring, ugly game. While Russell Wilson has been playing pretty well, he's going up against a really, really good defense. And Zach Wilson... He's going against a really bad defense. Oh my God, Zach Wilson might have a really good game. I am going to pick the Jets to get this W just because I don't trust the Broncos at all. They defeated the Bears, but barely. See what I did there? And so, why not? I'll bet on Zach Wilson. Jets win. By the way, here's a disclaimer. Do not bet on Zach Wilson ever. Then you got the Kansas City Chiefs taking on the Minnesota Vikings. The Chiefs, as we just talked about, struggling against the New York Jets defense on Sunday Night Football. Still getting away with the W, though with some help from their friends, the referees. Taking on the Minnesota Vikings, who got their first win last week. Well, they finally did it. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not great. It was against the Panthers. This game, I imagine, is going to be all Chiefs. The Vikings, I imagine they're going to do pretty well on offense. Kirk Cousins is having himself a good year, though last week he didn't look that great. Justin Jefferson is always going to be a monster. But for the Chiefs, I think this is going to be a rebound game here. We'll see if Taylor Swift winds up making a visit to the bird-killing stadium. And if so, it's not going to matter because the Chiefs are going to still win. Then, ladies and gentlemen... We have a phenomenal primetime game. You got the Dallas Cowboys taking on the San Francisco 49ers. This is actually the game that everybody is waiting for this weekend. We are tonight's entertainment. The Cowboys coming off a big win against the Patriots last week. They look dominant, but are they a suspect team? Of course they are. They're the Cowboys. They lost against the Cardinals, who, yes, are a chippy team, but they should not be losing to them. And the Cowboys have had, like, those statement victories, but it just always seems like when they play a real team, they collapse. And they're going against a real team in the San Francisco 49ers. CMC had four touchdowns last week. Brock Purdy had one incompletion, was near perfect on the day. They are going to be very difficult to stop. It's being played in Santa Clara, and I am just super excited for this game. Without Zeke Elliott to play center, I am very curious to see what the last play of the game is going to be called for with the Cowboys offense. But this is a great measuring stick for both teams. And if the 49ers get the W, well, they're going to still be Super Bowl favorites in the NFC. And if the Cowboys win, that's a whole lot of respect that's going to start being put on their name. I am going to go with the 49ers here. I think they are the more balanced team. I think they're the better team on offense and defense. But Cowboys, prove me wrong. And finally, on Monday Night Football, you got the Green Bay mother-loving Packers taking on the Vegas Raiders. Yeah, listen, I'm just going to be very honest. I think the Packers are going to win this game, but there is only one reason that we are going to Vegas, and that is to get Devontae Adams back. Baby, come back. You can take it out on me.
Devontae, please come home. The Green Bay Packers getting their butts kicked by the Detroit Lions last Thursday, and it was ugly. Their offensive line was awful. Dave Bakhtiari likely lost for the season. However, Elton Jenkins, he was practicing this week as well as Eric Stokes, so he could be getting two big players back, which would be phenomenal. Aaron Jones with a few extra days of rest. Hopefully, we actually utilize him here because the Raiders have one of the worst offenses and defenses in the league. Josh Jacobs, he's been struggling, which means that the Packers' run defense is going to give him his bounce back game. But the Raiders, yeah. Aiden O'Connell sacked six times by Khalil Mack. I didn't hear no bell. Yikes. Josh McDaniels making questionable decisions. <gasps> I'm shocked. But the Raiders, they're not a good football team. They have good players on their squad, but I don't believe in their coaching. Their defense is really not good. And their offense is just not producing besides Devontae Adams. So this will probably wind up being a closer game than it should. I am going to pick the Packers to get the W because with hopefully some extra rest, we get some players back plus a little bit more healthy. And on top of that, the Packers have a bye the following week. So this is a big game for them to try and get right before the bye. So I'm going to go with the Packers and please don't let me down. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. Who do you see being victorious this week? Let me know. You can always find me at Tom Grassi Comedy. All social media is seen down below. A big shout out and thank you to all the patron and YouTube members for supporting this channel. And thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Grassi. And as always, go Pack Go.